I find it amazing um, where Jesus' eyes are in any given story, what he's looking at, what he's looking out for. And it's never power. <laughs> it just isn't. And um, I love how there's actually a shorter form of this gospel available, which is funny. It's not a very long gospel to start with. But what it cuts out is the thing about the scribes in their long robes. And maybe Rome thought we shouldn't have that. You know, take that as an option out. Mark has a couple stories, right, that take it to about widening the phylacteries. And, uh, you know, this doesn't affect you. You don't care. It makes me nervous. <laughs> Severe condemnation, he said. But seriously, where is his eyes? Uh, and his eyes are always at the smallest. Those at the margins, those who don't feel connected or aren't. See, this is the interesting thing about the Hebrew code of law. It was really the only code of its time where widows didn't have inheritance right. Do you know that? that it, widows and orphans have such a space biblically because the Hebrew code didn't offer them any protection. I had a wedding yesterday and they used that great uh, first reading from Ruth, wherever you go, I shall go. Why is she saying that? Because she's in deep trouble. <laughs> she's lost her husband. And it's just a free fall down. And, she had, and of course, she had said to her, just go. Go back to your families. You know, to try to put your life back together. And of course, no, 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 no. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. Wherever you live, so shall I live. And it's such a beautiful thing to use in a wedding but it is always rooted in something that's really unfair. And so Jesus calling that out in and of itself, right? Like just to go, wait a minute, what are we seeing here? And so we see this woman give two small coins. And it's very significant that she has two coins because she could have very well just said, one for you, one for me. And who would have faulted her for it? That's all she's got. One for you, one for me. Of course, in the grand scheme, as I told the little ones, anything. You would need at least eight of those to buy a sparrow if you were going to offer it as a sacrifice. A sparrow. And yet there is something profound, isn't there? In seeing someone sacrifice, seeing someone surrender, seeing someone just say, here it is, all of it. I can't tell you the number of times in, in my ministry I've been around people and not always just in foreign mission like in the Philippines or, or Jamaica where their, their single dollar is, is, is actually further devalued than, say, the Philippine peso. It's 132 Jamaican dollars to a U.S. dollar. So their single J, their dollar, is not worth very much at all. But I remember once doing a camp with Catholic Heart Work Camp, and we had done some amazing things that week for this family. And their youngest son came up at the end of it and, and just handed me a fist full of coins. And it was like $1.32. I still have them, by the way, because I cried like an idiot when he handed them to me. He said, here, this is from us to you for helping, helping us, right? And you're like, just being the accountant here, this is pointless. We did thousands of dollars of repairs to your home, but it's all he had, all in coins, dirty coins, here. And it's funny, when we ended the camp just the next day, we ended with mass, I just laid those in front of the altar and said, you know, the bread that's going to come from the back, it gets changed when it comes up here, right? The wine that comes from the back, it gets changed. And that basket with money in it, it gets changed. Nothing that's coming from back there that comes up here goes out the same. Your donation becomes the way we show love to this community. It gets transformed. And in the end, what I think you and I notice is you have to practice surrender. You have to practice sacrifice. You have to practice suffering. And when we see it lived very well, and it's usually by people at least a little older than me, but not always. Man, when I worked in the children's hospital, I saw some really deep little kids. But I would say that it had a lot to do with their life had had a lot of suffering all along. And it produced a depth in them that you'd go, whoa, how, what are you looking at? How are you seeing it that way? 
But just as that little boy in Illinois handed me a dollar thirty-two and said, here, this is from us, it moved my heart to go, I got to do things better. I got to do things differently. I've got to stop putting my self-security first. And it wasn't some massive, powerful action that did that to me. It was a silly, pointless action in the eyes of the world. Just some snot-nosed punk kid handing me a bunch of dirty coins. But isn't that the way it always is with God? Just regular people bringing simple and silly things, bread and wine, to an altar to be sacrificed. So that what comes from here out to you is exactly what you and I need. Something to convert our heart. What converts our heart? Giving it all. Surrendering. And here's the Son of God saying, no, no, I'm just not going to tell you about it. I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to give you my presence that you would be changed. The other thing I got to do yesterday was go to my nephew's house. His daughter, it was her second birthday. And um, when, when I was being ordained, my stepfather said to my mom and to the family, like, you know, we're going to purchase this patent and chalice for Jeff for his ordination. But as my stepfather said in great wisdom, but everyone has to contribute to it. You know, it's not going to be like split up among the families. Like, so my nieces and nephews who were pretty young at the time, you know, like, and he said, it's got to come from their candy money or whatever money it is they have. It's, it's got to cost them something. What a great idea. And so my patent and chalice, which I'm going to use today, is that visual of the sacrifice was made by these poor nuns in Mexico, the sister disciples of the master, um, master of God. Yeah, great group of, they're in Boston. It's the only place they are in the U.S., um, Beautiful thing. But I'll never forget when it was brought out for my first Mass, my nephew, Nick, who I saw yesterday, man, he really gave that thing a good inspection. <laughs> you know, he could, because he's invested in it, right? He's invested in it. I gave up candy for this. Is it worth it? <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty cool. But you know what I noticed yesterday at his birthday, or his daughter's birthday party is, Nick has practiced sacrifice. Nick has practiced surrender. Anyone that has kids knows, or anyone that's been around them knows, you have to sacrifice. You have to surrender. I always say at graduation, whatever school I'm at, hey, make sure you go home and thank your parents for letting some of their dreams die so some of yours could take flight. And you always get the same face. Ooh. Oh, you didn't think about that? That your parents had to at certain points go, well, we're not going to do that because we're going to invest here. And so to watch my nephew yesterday with his little daughter and see, oh, he gets it. Five-year-old Nick, who was a little concerned about what his gum money had purchased, to 28-year-old Nick, who is sold out for his beautiful daughter. And I went from the wedding to the party to the wedding reception and it just keeps coming back to this, doesn't it? We need to practice surrender. We need to practice sacrifice. And Jesus says, don't worry, I have the food you need to get better and better at it. So that when those opportunities come, both that are given to us, the simple acts of sacrifice that you go, wow, there it is, and it changes your heart, or the ways in which we are those things for other people that are simple action. St. Francis de Sales once said, nothing is small in the service of God. Nothing. And this is the first story to prove it to us, but we all know many. Like I said, the story of Nick and the chalice is really small, but I never pick it up without thinking about it, that each of my nieces and nephews, in case they watch this and think I forgot, that they all sacrificed, <laughs> that they all gave up something so that I would have that beautiful Patton and chalice. You have all given up something so that we have not just this worship space, but the things that this community does for people out there and in here. Over and over and over, we have that opportunity. One of the little people will bring back those two coins and another little person's gonna bring up that patent with bread on it. And we will begin to watch anew 
this amazing sacrifice that Jesus did for each and every one of us. You're worth it. You're worth all of it. That he poured it all out for each of us. And then he asks us when it's, when it's required of us to do the same. Let this food strengthen us to be courageous. May God be praised.